Hello and welcome to the Philippines. This is an update to the uh, situation with earthquakes here in the Philippines. I'm over at a site uh, I'll get into a little bit later, uh, emsc-csem.org. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. This is an update from the video uh, yesterday that I did about a uh, seven, originally it was 7.3, then I've seen 7.1, I've seen 7 point. And uh, USGS different places rate it differently. Anyway, this is the interactive map. And this is northern Luzon, Baguio City up here, Manila, Quezon City, uh, where I'm at down here, Cebu City. Before I get more involved uh, with that map and that site, uh, let me jump over to the Philippine news sites and uh, get a little information, specific information uh, about the damage up in that area, northern Luzon, Abra. Uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, earthquake in northern Luzon, the large up, up north of Manila. And uh, they've had another earthquake there, and uh, five, about 4 a.m. this morning. That's done some additional damage. Anyway, we're going to get into some of the damage. Uh, when I did the video yesterday, there was very little information coming out. So there's finally some information and some pictures. I'm here on Manila Bulletin uh, news site, and uh, it's a pretty good news site you can go to. Uh, one of the leading uh, newspapers online here in the Philippines and you can find out a lot of information here anyway strong Abra that's the town in that area uh, quake damages vegan cathedral Bentayan bell tower in a local sur which is the northern province anyway it was 7.3 magnitude earthquake roused the people from sleep in different parts of Luzon and damaged various infrastructures and there's a look at uh, the vegan cathedral uh, damaged and that's one of the issues a lot of the older buildings in these earthquakes tend uh, to get damaged <sighs> has a shallow depth of 25 kilometers which, which explained why it was strongly felt in Metro Manila now I did get a comment saying that uh, from somebody saying they were in the Manila area they did not feel it now, I've felt three small earthquakes here in Cebu City, and uh, each of those was centered quite a ways away from Cebu Island. So they, they depending upon the rock structure of the ocean, um, they can travel quite some distance. And uh, anyway, I uh, my previous video, I put some links, and I'll put some links in the description of this video as well. Uh, to Quake Watch and a couple of other sites that you might be interested in as well. You've had a number of things happening. You've had buildings collapse. You've had, I think at this point, the count is five people have died because of this quake. Um, you've had you've had buildings damaged. You have had roads damaged. You've had landslides, a number of landslides. We'll get into that here in a bit. Uh, I think they gave a list of landslides that are closing roads so keep those types of things in mind as you are deciding about where to build where to live and I did see this video there was a video of this with people screaming uh, with debris falling off I found that on Facebook early yesterday just a couple hours after the earthquake and we're going to get some more pictures here I have not found many uh, non-copyrighted uh, pictures here. This is this is one in this uh, news article anyway. I did find this map from the Emergency Response Coordination Center, ERCC. And uh, this is uh, this particular quake. It shows it shows the relationship, Abra relationship to Manila up here and the rest of the Philippines and then a zoomed in map um, and then the zoomed in map shows the intensity levels uh, also over here is the the key if you can read that active fault lines are these uh, red solid lines so a number of active fault lines uh, that run up through this area 
what causes these earthquakes and can we predict earthquakes? I'll get into that there. Weird electromagnetic bursts appear before earthquakes. So we're learning more. Scientists are learning more. Investigation of the relationship among fault types, focal depths, ionospheric TEC anomalies before large earthquakes and more ionospheric. Ionosphere, I think it starts about 30 miles above the Earth, the atmosphere, and a lot, a lot of things going on in, in relation to sun and energy. I received an alert uh, a day or two before these earthquakes that there were, uh, that we are overdue. Uh, usually M6 glass earthquake, we get three per week on the Earth, none for the last 10 days. Uh, seven level, Earthquakes uh, usually get every 20 days, none for the last 60 days. So it's interesting that this happened uh, right the next day. And now I'll introduce you to the site that uh, gives me those alerts called quakewatch.net. And here's some information. And here's a site you might want to check out, quakewatch.net. Earthquake Prediction Center tells you how a little bit about uh, earthquakes and uh, about the various factors, including the sun, the energy coming from the sun. Sun blasts us with various types of energy and has a major effect on earthquakes, has a major effect on our health, physical and mental health, uh, as well as climate and storms across the world. Suspicious observers, uh, over 600,000 enthusiasts co cooperating get results. And you can uh, make an account over here. They've got premium content. Uh, space weather news, very inter interesting information. They have uh, hundreds of videos out on various things, how the space weather affects uh, your health. Mentally, physically, uh, climate and weather on Earth, earthquakes, uh, quakewatch.net, a um, number of different things, free resources. They have books that uh, I bought a number of their books. Um, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, very interesting book. And they have a number of videos, free videos. Here's that book here. You can buy it PDF form, which I did. I didn't want to pay for shipping a full book, although I prefer uh, a book in my hand and all, all sorts of different different climate forcing how the sun affects the weather and climate here on earth just really a lot of in, in, interesting very interesting number one risk the earth and you'll be interested to find out what that is they have a youtube channel as well called suspicious observers and I'll just show you a little bit where, where I'm at. I'm at this site here. And they have an app for your phone or tablet called Lastquake. And it can alert, you can set it up to alert you about earthquakes of various sizes in your vicinity. Now they have a number of different things. They have summaries, maps, uh, testimonies, pictures, list of data, scientific data. Lots of inf information here. Uh, go down here, Earthquake View Interactive Maps. That's where I'm at here if you want to report feeling an earthquake. Uh, a number of different uh, knowledge bases where you can go to learn various things as well. Anyway, I can zoom in and out of this. I can use the plus minus buttons. I can zoom in and out, just give you an idea what it is. And apparently it's picking up my location and just giving, well, I don't think it is picking up my location. It's giving a square where uh, some of the earthquakes are happening within the last 24 hours, I believe. And I think you can set a set of the parameters, uh, previous 24 hours, 48 hours, previous seven days, and up here seven days for the area. And because I'm down here in Cebu City, Davao City down here, now, just to give you an idea, my observation over the last seven years living here in uh, the Philippines and in Cebu City, uh, there's an island here called Bahol. They have had a, a couple of earthquakes, a number of earthquakes over those seven years. Had a big one back in 2013, even affected Cebu City a little bit. Uh, not, not much damage at that point in time, but uh, that was a 7.2. 
Um, Davao City down here, let me zoom into it, uh, Davao City and Mindanao, the large Mindanao Island, they tend to get some on these fault areas out here uh, and, and up, up the various areas of Davao. It's not unusual for me to get alerts about uh, earthquakes happening over her here. Of course, any place, uh, you know, your historical data is, is important, but it doesn't mean that you aren't going to get uh, earthquakes. Here's the Bohol Island I was talking about. Um, just as a reference, a lot of the typhoons, hurricanes, uh, come in from this direction. They often go north, they often go north, but we had last December, we had a big uh, typhoon, did major damage across this whole area, uh, going straight across the Visayas, Eastern Visayas, Central Visayas, Western Visayas, and uh, the mountains of Cebu City, where a lot of the farming is, uh, still recovering there. And uh, let me zoom in to, well, before I do that, let me go up to what's, what's been happening up here. This area up in here where they had the seven point or so earthquake, they're having aftershocks, several of them in the last day. And uh, of course, energy from earthquakes, tremors, do not travel equally in all directions, depends upon the uh, geological uh, situation. And so you can feel, you can feel, I think this, there are even people in Manila, down in Me Manila metropolitan area that did feel this quake. And going back to, in fact, I felt three here in Cebu City. I think uh, the biggest one I felt, which wasn't that big, but but I felt it, I was standing up. I thought I was dizzy at, at first. And I believe it actually happened over in this area here. So it traveled through the earth and there was some shaking done even over here, many hundreds of kilometers away. Uh, going back up to Luzon area, I can tell you uh, from watching the news over the last seven years, you've had a number of earthquakes up in this area. And this is Mindoro Island, smaller Mindoro Island. And uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago, perhaps they had swarms where each day almost they were having a number of earthquakes up in this area here. Uh, Batangas, very popular with uh, expats as well. This was the tall volcano that you have read about. It's uh, got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, activity here recently. Uh, it has blown its top and spread ashes. Tegete City spread its ashes even up into the Manila area. Considered one of the dangerous volcano potentially in the world. And there's another area that, uh, in fact, just in the last couple of years, I believe they had a major, uh, this is the Batines Island, Batanus, something like that. And you've got quite a number of islands up in here. And I'm not sure Batanes, if it includes all these islands or just a, a few of these islands, but they had a major earthquake up in here, did some major damage. And uh, this is, there's, some, there's some tourist activity up in this area as well. Jumping over to earthquake information over here, you can get a lot of information. This makes it look a lot worse than what it is. <laughs> you really need to zoom in. Really need to zoom in to get a little more perspective what's going on here. Uh, but they, they, they tend to follow a pattern, don't they? Of the uh, geol geological formations. Got New Zealand down here. You had a small one over here in Australia. Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, they've got volcanoes and earthquakes almost on a daily basis, it seems. There again, here we are in northern Luzon around the Abra area. Lots of aftershocks going on. There's also another site you may be interested in, Dutch Sense. Uh, he does a lot of, a lot of really in-depth uh, earthquake type information. He has been off YouTube, not really posting on YouTube for some time. Apparently the government government agencies don't appreciate what he does. He's got a little spat going with 
uh, USGS, in fact, he, he, he tried to tell them that, yeah, he can. There are patterns to earthquakes, and you can predict them within a certain degree of accuracy. And they said, no, not a chance. You can't do that. And uh, anyway, they've got a, a little spat going. And he claims that a lot of times his, when he's getting ready to uh, broadcast, all his Internet connections shut down, about three of them. So he hasn't been posting, uh, but he's also on TikTok, not TikTok, Twitch. There's also an app you can get. Uh, I think it's called Earthquake 3D, and there's a free version and paid version. And this is what it looks like. And it will, will give you, you can set alerts. You can, by how, uh, how large or small earthquakes are by region, in various ways, a very interesting app. And uh, he uses that in, in his broadcasts, and he does uh, regular broadcasts over on uh, Twitch as well. I think he's got a, a channel there. Anyway, thanks for coming along. If you're still with me here uh, 15 minutes in, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.